Bristol Community College, Mathematics with Dan Avdikian, Math 131, Elements of College Mathematics, Section 2.2, Problem 31. This is Section 2.2, Problem 31. It says solve the matrix. We have a matrix with a top row of 2, 1, 1, 6, a uh, second row of 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 3, and the bottom row is 3, 1, 2, 7. So the very first step we have to do is get a 1 in the upper leftmost position. Right now it's a 2. Now in this particular matrix we have two options. We could swap row 2 and row 1 and that would bring this whole row up putting a 1 in the correct position. That's the method I prefer. We could also get a 1 in the upper leftmost position by multiplying the top row by 1 over this value, by 1 over 2, or 1 half. That would work. It would eventually get us the same answer, but we're going to have 1 half, 1 half, 6 over 2 will reduce to 3, that'd be okay. Um, if I get the same answer either way, I, I'd rather do it without making the fractions. So I'm going to start off by getting our 1 in the upper leftmost by swapping row 1 and row 2. So let's start our next matrix. And off to the side, I'm going to write what I'm doing, and I'm going to put swap R1, comma, R2. So what was row 2 is going to come up to row 1. 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 3. And what was row 2 will push down to row 1. 2, 1, 1, 6. And row 3 just stays row 3. 3, 1, 2, 7. <clears throat> so, step one is done. Step one is get a one on the upper left. Now we have one on the upper left. So, step one is complete. Step two is zero with the rest of that leftmost column. The two and the three have to become zeros. So, as I set up the next matrix, row one can stay as is for now. One, negative one, negative one, negative three. But for row 2, I have to create an equation that will turn that 2 into a 0. So my equation will begin with the row where I'm making the 0, which for this problem is row 2. So I'm going to have row 2 equals some stuff plus the old row 2. My equation begins with the row I'm making the 0, which is row 2, and it must end in the same row. So if it starts in row 2, it's going to have to end in row 2. Now I initially just say stuff and I leave a blank area, and then I go back and fill in the stuff. The stuff is the row with the 1 in the same column that I'm making a 0. So that's row 1. Notice there's other 1s in other spots, but I want the 1 that's in the same column that I'm making the 0 in row 1. Now I'm going to multiply that row times the number that I'm zeroing out, which is a 2, but opposite sign. I have a 2 in my matrix, I have a 2 in my equation. One's positive, one's negative. They can't both be positive, they can't both be negative. I have to have one of each. So, now do that equation to create a new row 2 and it should begin with a 0. So, the first position, negative 2 times row 1 will be negative 2 times 1. I make a minus 2, add to row 2. Minus 2, positive 2, 0. Now the next position, careful with your signs, negative 2 times row 1, negative 2 times negative 1. Negatives will cancel, you make a positive 2. Add to row 2. So positive 2 and positive 1 is positive 3. Next position, same thing's going to happen actually. Negative 2 times row 1, I go negative 2 times negative 1 again. Again, I make a positive 2, right? The negatives cancel. And I add that result of positive 2 to row 2. So positive 2 plus positive 1, positive 3. And finally, the last position. Negative 2 times row 1, so negative 2 times negative 3, positive 6. Add that result to row 2, positive 6 plus another positive 6 will be positive 12. Now, that takes care of my new row 2, I got my 0. Now, the next row down, row 3, also has to start with a 0, right now it's a positive 3. Same type of thing, I'm going to make an equation that will turn that 3 into a 0, and it will change some of the other values in the bottom row. My equation must begin with the row where I'm making the 0. I'm making the 0 in row 3, so my equation has to start in row 3. So I have row 3 equals some stuff plus the old row 3. Again, if the equation begins in row 3, it has to end in row 3. It begins and ends with the same row. Now, what I initially call stuff, 
is the row with the one in the same column. Again, for this one, it is in row one. And it will be multiplied times the value that I'm zeroing, but with the opposite sign. So in my matrix, I have a positive three. In my equation, I have a negative three. Same number, one's positive, one's negative. So now, do that equation to every value in row three. It should start with a zero, and it will change the other numbers. So negative three times row one is negative three times one. I make a negative three. Add to row three, negative three, positive three. Sure enough, I do make a zero. The next position, it was a one, it will change. Negative three times row one, negative three times negative one, I'll make a positive three. Add that to row three. So positive three, positive one will be a positive four. Next, negative three times row one. So again, negative three times negative one is positive three when I multiply, because the negatives cancel. Add that positive three I made to row three. So three plus two more is five, positive five. And finally, the last position, I have a seven. It too will change. So I have negative three times row one. So negative three times another negative three. That'll become a positive nine. I'm going to add that nine to row three. So nine plus seven more, both positive. Positive nine, positive seven will give me a 16. So now step two is complete. Step two said zero the values in those positions. I got it. So step two is finished. Step three. Get a 1 in the middle, in the middle of the second column. Right now it's a 3. If you can, swap rows. That's not going to work. So I have to do 1 over this number, 1 over 3, times the entire second row. And that'll make a 1. And fortunately, the other fractions that I will create will reduce back to whole numbers. So let's set up the next matrix. And when I do, the top row can stay for now. So I'm going to keep 1 negative 1, negative 1, negative 3. I will make a new row 2. Row 2 is 1 over 3. 1 over the number that's changing to a 1 times the entire row 2. So again, when I make zeros, I'm adding two rows together. When I make ones, I only deal with one row, if I can swap. And when I make zeros, I do opposite sign. When I make ones, same sign, right? Positive, positive. So 1 over 3 times row 2. 1 over 3 times 0 is 0. 1 over 3 times 3. I make 3 over 3. 3 over 3 reduces to 1. Same thing happens in the next position. 1 over 3 times row 2 is 1 over 3 times 3. I make 3 over 3. 3 over 3 reduces to 1 again. Last position, 1 over 3 times row 2. I have 1 over 3 times 12. That's going to make a 12 over 3, which reduces to 4. And for this step, the bottom row is OK. So I can keep 0, 4, 5, 16. So step 3 was to get a 1 in that middle position, and I got it. Step 4, the rest of that column, or what I call the Y column, has to become a 0. The negative 1 in the top row, the positive 4 in the third row. So let's deal with the negative 1 first. Let's make it a 0. So I'm going to set up my next matrix. And I'm going to make an equation to make a new row 1. My, that equation will start with row 1, because the equation must start with the row where I'm making the 0. I'm making a 0 in row 1. My equation will start in row 1. So I will have row 1 will equal some stuff plus the old row 1. If I start in row 1, I must end in row 1. Now, what I initially call the stuff the stuff is the row with the 1 in the same column as I'm making the 0. So that's row 2 for this matrix. So row 2. And that row is multiplied times the number that I'm zeroing, but with the opposite sign. So I'm zeroing a minus 1. My equation will also have a 1, but it'll be a positive 1. 1's negative, 1's positive. So 1 times row 2 plus row 1, I'm really just doing row 2 plus row 1. So I'm going to go right across and do that. First position, row 2 plus row 1, 0 plus 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. Next position, row 2 plus row 1. 1 and negative 1. 1 and negative 1 is 0, which is what I wanted. Next position, actually same thing. 1 and negative 1 be another 0, which is good. Zeros are easy to work with. And the last position in that row, row 2 plus row 1, positive 4 and negative 3. 
positive 4 and negative 3 is going to give me a positive 1. The next row down I don't want to change for the column I'm working in. Let's go to 1. I want it to be a 1, so I just keep it. 0, 1, 1, 4. But now the bottom row right now has a 4, a positive 4. I need to make it into a 0. So I'm going to make an equation for that. Row 3 equals, and my equation begins with row 3 because the equation has to start with the row where I want to make the 0. I want to make a 0 in row 3. My equation will start in row 3. It will equal some stuff plus the old row 3. My equation begins in row 3. It must end in row 3. Now, what I initially just called stuff will be the row with the 1 in the same column as I'm making a 0. So that's column. I'm in the middle column here, so that's row 2, the row with my 1. And it will be multiplied times the number that I'm zeroing out, but opposite sign. So I'm zeroing a positive 4. My equation will have a negative 4. So that's the equation that will make my 0, and I'll change some of the other values in the row. So make my new row 3 using that equation. So 4 times row 2, negative 4 times row 2, plus row 3. So negative 4 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. The next one should also come to a 0. So negative 4 times row 2, negative 4 times 1, I make a minus 4. Add that result to row 3. Minus 4, positive 4, minus 4, positive 4 is 0. Again, I'm just applying the equation to the values right across. Next one, negative 4 times row 2. Negative 4 times 1, I make a negative 4. Add to row 3. Negative 4, positive 5. Negative 4, positive 5 is positive 1. And finally, the last position, negative 4 times row 2. Negative 4 times positive 4 is going to be negative 16. Add the negative 16 to row 3. Negative 16, positive 16 adds to 0. So step 4, the step I just did was make zeros show up in the top row and bottom row in the second column, and I got it. So now I go on to step 5. Step 5 is turn the position in this bottom of row 3 into a 1. Well, it's a 1 by itself. It showed up on its own, so it saved me a step. So if it wasn't a 1, I'd have to do some work to make it a 1, but it's a 1. So I move on to the next final step, make the rest of that column, what I call the z column, into zeros. One of the values is already a 0. So the only thing I have to do is zero out the 1 that's in the second row. Once I finish that, I'll have my whole answer. So I'm going to make a new matrix, which should be my final matrix, the solution. And I will make a new row 2. Row 1 is good the way it is. I can actually write it in. 1, 0, 0, 1. Again, ordinarily on this step, I'd have to do some work to get that 0 to show up, but it showed up on its own. So now just 0 the 1. So I'm going to make an equation that will begin in row 2 because that's the row where I want to make my 0 show up in row 2. It will equal some stuff plus the old row 2. Right? If my equation begins in row 2, it must end in row 2. The stuff is the row with the 1 in the same column as where I'm making the 0. So that's in row 3. Multiply times the number that I'm zeroing, but opposite sign. So this is a 1, so in my equation I have a negative 1. And I'll go ahead and do that equation. That should zero out this value and finish my matrix. So negative 1 times row 3. Negative 1 times 0. That's 0. Add to row 2. So 0 plus 0. So this first position is 0. The next position, negative 1 times row 3. Negative 1 times 0. That's 0. Add to row 2. 0 plus 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. The next position, negative 1 times row 3 is negative 1 times 1, that's a minus 1. Add to row 2, so you're going to add negative 1, positive 1. Negative 1, positive 1 is 0. And then find the last spot, negative 1 times row 3 is negative 1 times 0. That'll just stay 0. Add 0 to the, the result, you got 2 row 2, so 0 and 4. 0 plus 4 is 4. And finally, the bottom row is good the way it is. 0, 0, 1, 0. So now, this matrix has been solved. It's got all the zeros and ones where they belong and the positions they should be in. I've got the ones going along the diagonal. The last column shows me the solution. 
and that solution is, top row says x is 1, the middle row says y is 4, and finally the bottom row says z is 0. And I'm done.